Welcome back to Crossroads Live. We are at the Spirit of the Cowboy, and we are here in McKinney, and I'm sitting with this beautiful young lady who can sing. I'm telling you, I heard her yesterday, and she was so good. I'll tell you what, I think her name was Paula. Right. And <laughs> what's your last name? Williamson. Paula Williamson. That sounds like a name of a star. There you go. I, I want to ask you about your, your color hey. pink. <laughs> and the boots. Talk yeah. about them boots for me. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, I've always liked pink. That's just my color. And so everybody, every place I go, everybody says, oh, it's you. You know, they remember who I am because I have the pink boots pink on. Boots. You're, <laughs> you're, you're like Pat Boone with the white uh, suede shoes. Oh, Maybe the, it's not blue suede shoes, I thought. Oh, no, he had white, white. white, <laughs> okay. white shoes. I don't know if they were suede, but anyway, yeah. they were white bucks or something yep. back in the... <clears throat> Dark ages. We did uh, television back then by candlelight. <laughs> oh, that's so long. Everything ago. looked white back then, either <laughs> yeah, or black. Yeah, everything. Uh, but anyway, where's home? Where are y'all from? Oh gosh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm from the Ozarks by way of Phoenix, Arizona. So. <laughs> I'm from, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm from Texas by way of Louisiana. So there you there go. There you go. <laughs> and, but anyway, no. Uh, when did you start playing and playing the guitar and singing and well, I started singing. My mama says I was two years old when I started yodeling. And uh, I would debate that, but I couldn't because I can't remember it. You can't remember, huh? <laughs> but I did start playing the guitar when I was about 16, I think. I went to my first festival, and there were only three chairs sitting there, and we had a jam session. And by golly, I learned to play the guitar in one night because... Yeah, I already knew the chords, you know, yeah. but by gum, you know, I was determined. I had to sit there because I was one of the few, I was one of the three people that had a seat. <laughs> and I so, wasn't going to lose so, my seat. So what was the first, <laughs> you remember the first song you learned? Probably Daddy Frank because it only has two chords in it. And see, so That's the one I need to start with. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So anyway, have you got albums out, CDs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've got Seven CDs right now. Seven CDs. Yeah. And basically cowboy uh, western music? Not or? all. Uh, I used to do uh, the Hank and Patsy show in Branson, Missouri. Okay. And so I was one of the Patsies. Yeah. And uh, so I've got a whole album of Patsy Cline songs. And then I've got one I just released. Uh, my my husband, Ermel, is John Wayne. Yeah. Uh, has, has seven, is author of seven books. And so I did the, they did a trailer. For, to make it the book into a movie and they called me up and asked me the night before would I write a theme song for it and I said sure so I did <laughs> and so that's that whole album is is western songs and some real good yodeling on there and uh, all about the different books well tell me something uh, I've done this to a lot of people mm -hmm. so tell me the love story between you and the Duke over there. Oh, well, that that's a challenge, all right. <laughs> well, see, we were both in Branson, Missouri, and I was singing at the Hard Luck Diner, which is a is a regular uh, 50s diner, but all the wait staff there sing. And so I was yodeling, and he was down at the other end signing books. Yeah. Well, we traded books and CDs, and, and actually we met out at a ranch, uh, uh, close to there. We both got booked in the same place, so I kept running into him in all these different places, and I said, you need a yodeler in your act. And he says, I do John Wayne and Gary Cooper. I don't need no yodeler in the yeah. act. And I said, I don't care who you are, two hours of a man talking. You really need a yodeler in your act. <laughs> I love the way you were just persistent. You went after it, right? And so finally, Oh, he kept, he kept, you know, I'd, I'd sat there for two, he'll tell you, I, I pestered him for two, three weeks, and I said, you need a yodeler in your act, you need a yodeler in your act. 
And uh, finally, I got him to go over to Silver Dollar City, and there's a group over there that I used to sing with. And he heard me yodel, and he said, all right, if a theater comes open, I'll, let, I'll hire you. Well, about two weeks later, he came in and he says, all right, I've got a theater. <laughs> so y'all were working in Branson for a while? Yeah, we worked in Branson for about, uh, about almost 10 years. Oh, yeah, well, we had a theater that's in Branson. A good gig, ten years. Well, yeah, but Branson's Branson's tough. Branson's tough. Yeah, and well, so, a lot of competition. A lot well, of competition because you got all the people from oh, Nashville. Yeah. Well, there was 147 shows when we started. So, really? Yeah, and so uh, anyway, we we uh, did our show, and of course, the only thing is Branson closes in the winter time. You know, come, I didn't know that. Yeah, Christmas. You know, they go into. Christmas is their fifth season. They have spring, summer, winter, and fall, and then they also have Christmas. And Christmas is a season unto itself. And so, you know, you have a whole tourist season just built around Christmas. Mm. But anyway, we you do Christmas and the whole thing shuts down. There is wow. no way. <laughs> there is no work. <laughs> yeah. There is no so, work. So everybody that I know of, they all go to South Texas. And you know that song, there were miles and miles of Texas? Yeah. They wrote it driving to South Texas. <laughs> Is that what it was? You can drive for three days and, and see nothing but Texas. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're in God's country. Oh, man. That's <laughs> what they said about the Ozarks. Oh, is that right? <laughs> i tell you what. Why don't you do us a song? Anything you want to do. <laughs> I'll tell you what. First song, uh, they asked me when the first time we came to Texas if I would write a song about Texas. And I said, well, I don't know much about Texas. And they said, well, just write us a song about Texas. And I said, okay, that's what I'll do. So this is my song for Texas. <laughs> well, there must be something magic within the Western style. Something mystifying in the twinkle of their eye. The way they tip their hat and smile and just say, howdy, ma'am, makes me fall for a cowboy every time. And I don't know a thing about Texas. I don't know a thing about the West. I don't know one thing about the cows and their kind, but I fall for a cowboy every time. Well, there's a jingle in his spurs as he saunters across the room. I joy in his demeanor as he hums a cheerful tune. From the crease of his stetson to the heel of his boot, oh, I dearly love to dance with a cowboy beneath the moon. And I don't know a thing about Texas. I don't know a thing about the West. I don't know one thing about the cows and their kind, but I fall for a cowboy every time. Several people who yodel. I'm uh -huh. not a lot of friends of mine that are yodelers. Janet McBride, right? And, and uh, Miss Devon. I don't know if you met them. Oh or yeah, not. met them both. Oh yeah, and uh, Kristen Harris. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're all yodelers. Mm -hmm. Everyone. And I've asked them all the same question. When did you wake up one day and find you out you could yodel? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, gosh, I started yodeling. Uh, <laughs> Most of the yodeling that I do, I started out when I was about 10 or 11 years old. We moved. My daddy was a Baptist preacher. So we moved to a little place in Arkansas where you couldn't get even the radio on a good day. <laughs> and so there was nothing to do. <laughs> they used to tell us that we were so far back in the sticks that the sun sat between our house and town. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> so there was nothing to do. So I learned to yodel. <laughs> mm. And that's when I learned so many different styles and different yeah. patterns and different. And this started yodeling more and more and more. And, yeah. you know. Well, let me ask you this. I want you to do me a favor. 
because I know there's a lot of people out there in the, in the audience, and I want you to do one more song for me, and I want you, if you can go back in your memory and bring me out some Patsy Klein. I think people Oh, are, wow. Well, you? I mostly do that with the music. Uh, oh, I see. Doing acapella. You. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Well, you I don't, do a little. I don't play it on the guitar. Oh, no, you don't? Do oh, okay. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you what. Let, scratch that. Oh, do, any, do me another song. <laughs> I can do crazy. Can you do crazy? <laughs> I do. All right. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy for trying. And I'm crazy for crying. And I'm crazy for loving you. You would have to be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. And I tell you what, we want to thank you so much thank for you. all of for taking time to be with us here on Crossroads Live and at the Spirit of the Cowboy. Thank you. All right. All right. Go see this lady when she's in town, folks. All right. Alrighty. Coming right back. We are all students in the school of big storms. We have learned what happens when governments, families, and communities aren't prepared for hurricanes. Now, scientists say a changing climate may mean more frequent and violent storms, and we need to act before the next big storm hits to prepare and protect families and communities and restore the natural defense system, the wetlands and forests that protect us all from high water and winds. Together, we can do it. Learn how. I want to tell everybody a little story. First of all, let me welcome you all to the Spirit of the Cowboy here in McKinney, Texas. But I want to tell you all a story real quick, and then we'll get on with this song. Uh, years ago, I used to live in Garland, Texas. I don't know if y'all know where Garland is. Right down the street. Right down the street. I had a friend of mine by the name of George Ty. He was the biggest John Wayne fan that ever lived. And John Wayne was in Dallas for the premiere of um, the War Wagon. Yes, he was here for the War Wagon. The whole cast was here. Everybody was here but Kirk Douglas. Oh, no. Yeah, Kirk wasn't here. But the whole cast was here. So anyway, I went, I, and I got to be honest, I always liked John Wayne, you know, but I was always a Steve McQueen and them kind of guys, you know. But anyway, so... He talked me, and he couldn't get nobody to go with him to this premiere. So I said, I'll go with you, just to shut him up. <laughs> so we go there, and we're sitting in. We waited an hour in line to get into the theater because everybody wanted to see John Wayne. Oh, yeah. So we're sitting there, and I'm on the first floor of the theater. They bring out all the little actors. I call them the little actors. And then they bring out John Wayne. Uh -huh. And once I saw him, I think I was the first person on my feet applauding. I was so caught up in. But you already saw him before you went there. Not in person. Well, who who did you talk to about going there? George George Ty, my friend. Oh, I didn't know that. It sounded like you were talking about John Wayne. No, I was talking about George. George. Wanted me to go with him to oh, see. Oh, yeah, oh, and he couldn't oh, find anybody to go, so he talked to me, and I said, "I'll go." Just to shut him up. Yeah, just to shut him up, and I went. And I'm on the bottom floor, and John Wayne walks out on that stage, and I'm the first person on my feet. Uh -huh. I'm not kidding you. I was, like, caught up in the moment <laughs> of seeing John Wayne. So, anyway, I never thought I would ever actually have John Wayne on Crossroads Live. So, I do today, sort of. Anyway, I'm going to turn this microphone over and step out of the way and let these guys do a song which John Wayne actually didn't sing in the movie, did he? he didn't. No, he didn't. But I'll tell you what, they have one of my favorite actors in that movie, Walter Brennan. There you go. I'm going to let y'all take it over, okay? And I'm just going to step out of the way and y'all just have fun. All right. And that's exactly what we do, Jim. We have fun. Uh, when we do a production number, we incorporate songs and music, of course. Polly here is about the greatest female singer I've ever heard outside of, you know, the librettos out there, the operettas and so forth, but she is fantastic. She has 400 songs up in her mind here, Brain, and she writes and records dozens of them. 
But anyways, we um, we do things like this here in our in our show because people like to know a little bit about Dean Martin and and uh, Ricky Nelson. She does Ricky Nelson. I'll do uh, Dean Martin. So we do one from Rio Bravo. It's called. The sun is setting in the west, the cattle go down to the stream. The red wing settles in her nest, it's time for this cowboy to dream. Purple lights in the canyon, that's where I long to be with my three good companions. Just my rifle, rifle my pony, and me. Gonna hang my sombrero on the limb of a tree. Coming home, sweetheart, darling. Just my rifle, my pony, and me. Whip a will in the meadow, sings a sweet melody. Coming home, sweetheart, darling. Just my rifle, my pony, and me. No more cows to be roping. No more trays, some of what I'll Till I see strays round the bend, she'll be waiting for my rifle, my pony, and me. Whip a will in the meadow, sings a sweet melody. Round the bend, she'll be waiting. For my rifle, my pony, and me. For my rifle, my pony, and me. All life. Well, we're happy to be here, Jim. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back with the Duke. Howdy, folks. My name is Jim Hawk Powell, but today I'm out here with Danny Boy, out, out here at the Crossroads Ranch. My request is this. Have you signed up to be an organ donor? And have you talked this over with your loved ones so that they know your desires? That is a gift that only you and God together can give to those in need. So, till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the Crossroads. Let's go. Cool. All right. Welcome back to Crossroads Live. We are on the road. We're in McKinney, Texas at the Spirit of the Cowboy. And I'm standing here with a gentleman. Boy, you're really looking good for a guy. No, anyway, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Give us your real name. Irma Williamson. They call me Irma. Irma yeah, Williamson. Yeah. yeah. So where's home? Don't tell me you're from up north somewhere. Well, I was raised in Detroit, moved to uh, California, became an actor 40 years, and they picked me out as John Wayne, and I've been doing John Wayne ever since. So you, uh, so... Name me a couple of films you worked in. I mean, well, the films I did, Patty Hearst movie. I played uh, Patrice Hearst's uh, dad. I did the Tom Hanks movie, um, Bonfires of the Vanity. I forgot that one. I've done uh, with uh, Ben Gazzara, Burt Reynolds. Uh, Wait a minute. You said Ben Gazzara? I remember. I worked with, with yeah. him. Yes, I did. I did a little film right here in McKinney, folks. I did a film called The Trial of Lee Harvey Oswald. I know you heard of him. And uh, anyway, Ben Gazzara play, was in the movie. Uh -huh. He usually plays a uh, lawyer. Or, yeah. uh -huh. That's he, play, he played a lawyer for the state, for, for, for the government. Well, he did a lawyer with this with Jacqueline Smith, and I played the judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it was a woman against the odds, so I did that one. 
Uh, quite a few. Um, I did uh, Golden Girls uh, sitcoms. I did uh, Burt Reynolds' Evening Shade. Uh, Hail to the Chief with old Patty Duke. Remember her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I played the President of the United States. I did quite a few, yeah. yeah. And uh, finally, they, uh, they caught me after I did a film and uh, said, uh, we'd like for you to do John Wayne. I thought they were kidding. And I was belled at somebody because we're having a drink in the bar and the uh, directors and actors were there. And they said, no, MTM is doing a uh, shoot next door. Would you come over there and let's film you? And they had an outfit for me. I went over there and did it. And I saw it later that night and I fell off the couch. There's John Wayne, bigger than life. I said, you've got to be kidding. And uh, you, never, you never thought about that before. I never before. thought about it, and not in the lightest, slightest, yeah. not in the slightest. And uh, they did, though. Yeah. They convinced me, and uh, here I am. Yeah. yeah. Still doing it. Six foot four. I've done all these commercials. I did all the Curse Light Beer commercials. We did from Comancheros, uh, Trouble Along the Way, The Quiet Man. We did them all. Yeah. Uh, he's been gone about 35 years, and they superimposed his face on my body. So, mm -hmm. so I did all the acting. When he turns around, you see him with Lee. Uh, remember Lee Ermy from Full Metal Jacket? Yes. We did that one uh, over at Van Nuys Airport. And uh, he turns around and uh, he says, It's my bear, Sergeant. And here I am in full, uh, you know, regime. And uh, uh, it's just a fun thing to do because we've traveled. I've been in Japan, I've been in Asia, I've been in Europe, uh, wherever they want John Wayne. And then they say, What do you do? What do you want John Wayne to do? Yeah. You know, I'm a good swimmer, a good diver, a good rider. Um, ridden, uh, not a hundred parades, but lots, lots and lots of parades with rodeos. Uh, Paula here is an asset. She came aboard with the uh, John Wayne show in Branson uh, 11 years ago. And we've done it for 10 years. And uh, she brought a, a different aspect to the whole thing, Western. And she's written songs. I've got seven books I wrote uh, with John Wayne as the epicenter of the whole thing. And uh, she sings uh, the trailer for the, the, for the movies. And Across the Brazos is a beautiful, beautiful song that she writes for my book. And then The Ghost of Jenny McBride, she writes, uh, tells a whole story in such better than I wrote. Yeah. I mean, Amy, I wrote that. Uh, it brings out that. It brings out the message, yeah. the true message. And yeah. uh, we're having nothing but fun. Uh, donating our uh, acting ability, impersonation, look like the whole nine years. People want uh, pictures. I love it. Yeah. Uh, we just have a great ball. That's wonderful. He's a great man. Yeah. I was just talking to a fellow about James Gardner, and most people don't know it, but James Gardner was John Wayne's favorite actor. Really? He, yeah, he thought James Gardner was a fantastic actor. He was. Yeah. He always made it natural. Yeah. He was so natural. He said the way he raised his eyebrows, the way he looked at the, I mean, this was all John Wayne talking about James Gardner, and James Gardner is and was one of the best. Yes, he was. And I tell you, I heard on an interview, I never met Mr. Gardner, but I heard on an interview where he said, what I do is I try to make it look like I'm doing it for the very <laughs> first time. And you got to. Huh? You got to. Yeah. Doris Day was like that. Doris Day didn't like rehearsals. She did not like no, rehearsals. No, really? Yeah. And so whenever she did a, a film, she tried to do it one take, just one. And James Gardner got into that. Like same. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, Sinatra was the same way, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it, it's uh, the thing is, you you get what you see. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the idea. Yeah. And John Wayne, uh, John Ford, would not, he didn't like rehearsals either. And what? And let me tell you a story. John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara and The Quiet Man were supposed to do that the dragging scene up to Victor McLaughlin, mm -hmm. where they did the fight scene. And uh, John Ford said, no rehearsal. Lunchtime, they went over the hedge and they rehearsed it for a full hour. The whole thing was rehearsed. Uh -huh. And then when he says, okay, everybody get together, they shot it, one take. He says, now you see, that's why we don't have any rehearsals. Uh -huh. Well, I, <laughs> can't, do it. Thing was I can't do it without rehearsing. I, I got to shoot a Western next week and uh, a Western TV show. And uh, where well, I played a villain, folks. And uh, so anyway. Typecasting. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I want you to know. I'm going to tell you real quick. Okay. Uh, what happened was when they called me about this uh -huh. and they, want, they said, would you be interested in playing a villain? I'm writing a villain and I want you to play him. I said, I love it. You bet. I went over and I told my wife, I said, guess what? 
I'm getting ready to do Bob Terry's uh, Sundown, and I'm going to play a villain. Sundown, and she, yeah. yeah. And she goes, wow, yeah. that's great. First time I ever saw her get excited about anything I'm doing. <laughs> Gary Cooper turned down some roles that John Wayne took simply because Gary Cooper didn't want to play the villain. Remember Red River? Yes. Tom Danson? Yeah. Tom Danson was a bad guy. Angel and the Bad Man? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. They gave the part to Gary Cooper first. He turned it down. And Angel and the Bad Man? Yeah. John Wayne wanted Gary Cooper for it. Wouldn't do it. John Wayne stepped in and did it. He was a bad guy. Yeah. The Searchers? He was a bad guy. Yeah. Reap the Wild Wind. Uh, yeah. All of these he played as a bad guy. But the thing was, he is so good playing a bad guy that he was him. good. <laughs> yeah. He was good. Well, was you gorgeous. know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I was talking to my friend. Uh, Alice Cord uh -huh. works in, you know, fine actor. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to Alex one day, and Alex is a very good friend of Ernest Borgnine, right? The and I friend. said, if I could have ever talked to Ernest Borgnine, one thing I wanted to tell him, I hated him from here to eternity. Yeah, yeah. yeah what a great job. And Montgomery Cliff, without a doubt, was always one of my favorite actors. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what? They're telling me I got to get out of town. And uh, <laughs> no, we got to wrap this up. Wrap it up. All right. It's thank good. you very much. Yeah, I'm going to call you the Duke one more time. Here we go. And we'll be right back. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. All right, it. buddy. We'll talk to you yeah. soon. We'll be right back on Crossroads Live at McKinney, Texas at the Spirit of the Cowboy. And uh, hope everybody's having a good time. We are all students in the School of Big Storms. We have learned what happens when governments, families, and communities aren't prepared for hurricanes. Now, scientists say a changing climate may mean more frequent and violent storms, and we need to act before the next big storm hits to prepare and protect families and communities and restore the natural defense system, the wetlands and forests that protect us all from high water and winds. Together we can do it. Learn how. So, till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the crossroads. Let's go. Then. Um, well, it's coming out. I'm not sure when. We have half of it recorded already, and um, half of it is, you know, Western Swing, kind of a big band feel. And then the other half is my originals with a real Western cowboy flair. Um, there's a little bit of yodeling and um, a whole lot of good stuff on there. Um, we're recording it with Dave Alexander, so he's my producer on that. Um, I'm...